we call this Maxwell's equations. And it's because, it's not because Maxwell came up with all of them. He didn't. He didn't come up with any single one of these equations. But he was the guy who came up with what's called Maxwell term. It's the very last term to be discovered, to be reasoned through in electricity and magnetism. And since this is the piece that completes electricity and magnetism, he gets to put his stamp on it. So with the Maxwell term, this is the physical situation that, um, that Maxwell considered that allowed people to, or allowed Maxwell, to realize that there is a missing term in our laws of nature. So you have a current flowing. And this ambiguity in the surface that you can define, that's actually important. Now let me make a small, but you know, before we said this ambiguity doesn't matter because the current enclosed, enclosed is the same either way, right? Now let me make one tiny modification that will um, make that ambiguity important again. So what I'm going to do is I have a long wire that's going through like this. And I see that to introduce a contradiction, introduce some kind of self inconsistency, what I need to do is I need to make the uh, current through this surface different from current through this surface, right? I need to have some current coming in and not leaving through this surface here. And I cannot really have current leaving through any of the side surfaces either. Because if I did that, then they would have net zero current. All right, so using what you know about uh, circuits, this is now something you can do. You can imagine this current being kind of stopped by a capacitor. So instead of a wire connecting through, if you imagine a capacitor being introduced here, so this is kind of a large gap capacitor, but imagine it's a capacitor. Then now you see that this current that's coming in, it's not jumping across the capacitor gap. It's getting stored here as positive charge, right? As that happens, now, you know, if you are looking at it on this other side, then there is actually current flowing here, right? The capacitor doesn't actually stop the current. Um, but the way the current that flows out here happens is you have an accumulation of negative charge on this plate. But this is something you can say. When you are looking at in the, when you are looking at in the in-between region, I guess purple is the only color. When you are looking in the in-between region, there is no current here. No charge ever jumps across the gap. You have positive charge that comes in here, which attracts a negative charge. So that means negative charges are flowing this way. That looks like a positive charge, a positive current flowing the other way. But you, this is something we can say. There is no current that's actually jumping across this gap. So now we have introduced the uh, internal contradiction. Because when you look at current and close to through the blue surface, then so current and close to through blue surface is the current that was coming in. Let me call that I naught. Um, that's uh, I naught because you know it pokes through and it never leaves through any of the side surfaces. So that is my current enclosed. But when you look at the current enclosed through the green surface, then, well, no charge ever crossed this surface. So this is now zero. Yeah. So, so this is an ambiguity that now matters. So you are trying to calculate magnetic field at this point, for example. And if you pick to your, so, and you know, this is the Amperian loop that you picked. And if you had a, for whatever reason, if you picked a blue surface as the surface that's being enclosed by your Amperian loop, 
then you would have gotten this sensor as your enclosed current. On the other hand, if you went in with a simple surface of the circular surface, then you would have gotten my enclosed current is zero. Now you have two different answers. I guess they can both be wrong, but at least one of them must be wrong. So, you know, at this point, at this point in space, you are going to have some kind of magnetic field. So at this point in space, you will have some kind of magnetic field as a function of position at that point in space. Will this magnetic field be consistent with calculation given through this number or calculation given through this number? Or which one, which one of the two do you think is more likely to be wrong? Like this seems wrong, right? It seems to suggest that there's an abrupt change introduced by just this capacitor being there. But hopefully, intuitively, you think, you know, if I have a current of wire, and if I suddenly replace some part of it with the capacitor, that actually doesn't change anything other than what's going on with the capacitor. So, yeah, so we start out with that intuition that somehow, even though it's not supported by current Ampere's law, that the result that's going to be obtained with this is still the correct result. So now what we do is, we, by saying that this is the correct result, we are saying that uh, somehow this form of Ampere's law is lacking. It's missing a term. And now we are going to try to guess at what this term must be so that, um, the, so that you know, if we calculate the magnetic field using this, uh, we would get the same answer. But now this is the challenge. Uh, we want to think locally. We want to think, what can I calculate using only the quantities that are available along in this circular area? So you know, this blue area, that's kind of remote. It's more global. I need to reach out to some space that I may not have access to. Um, but so now what I want to do is I want to come up with a set of terms so that I can use only the information that's in this uh, surface and still come up with the same result. So my current enclosed will still be zero. But what I need to do is I need to come up with some other quantity that I can say is um, analogous to the current. Sort of like how the magnetic field can produce a quantity that's analogous to electric field, the induced electric field. So, so the quantity that we are going to come up with here, that's the quantity that is called displacement current. And I'll just have to tell you that it's an old fashioned term. So the only sense in which this is, this is like a current is that this is the quantity that's going to be replacing the I enclosed. But let me actually write it down. You will see that in it, um, it has nothing to do with the charges moving, at least not literally through. Um, so, but it's going to be some quantity that will still be associated with this current flowing in. So I guess what I want you to consider is what kind of effect does this current have that you can measure with only the sensors that are placed in this, along this surface? Like imagine that you, know, you have access to nothing else. You, you simply know um, two things. You know that there's current coming in here. And you know there's something you can measure here that will let you figure out what this current is. What kind of things can you measure here? Other than magnetic field, since that's kind of circular reasoning. <laughs> We're trying to, get, trying to get at an expression for magnetic field. So what can you measure here that tells you that there's a something going on with the capacitor? Chris? Yeah, there's going to be electric field. So when this capacitor wasn't charged up at all, with no charge on it, uh, if you measure the electric field in between the capacitor, 
you would have gotten zero charge, right? As the current comes in, you would have charges accumulating on the capacitor, ne positive and negative, and you still don't, from here, you don't actually have access to the charges. But what you do have access to is the electric field that those charges are going to be generating. So uh, let me draw, write down E to make sure it's electric field, it's not current. So as more current comes in, there'll be more charges accumulating and there will be electric field, more electric field generated. So Chris, help us clarify this. Um, is it the electric field itself that tells you that there's current or something else that's associated with the electric field? Like if you, if you are sitting between the capacitors and you measure the electric field, would you based on that alone say there's current coming in or would you need to see something else? Yeah, so if you had the charges accumulated on the capacitor, then you would already accumulate it. Then with no current coming in, you would have electric field, right? So what, what do you need to be able to say about the electric field to say that there's current coming in? Oh, yeah, that it's changing. That in this case, the electric field is increasing. But what's going to be important to hear is, um, so, so, okay, it'll be no current, but there, as the current flows in, there will be a change of electric field. And this is going to be the basis of what we call displacement current. We have to assemble the quantities in a way so that it has correct units and everything. Um, but so let's take the break now. And when we come back from break, we will um, guess this Maxwell term based on these simple two facts that, or simple two assumptions, that um, both of these situations should lead to the same answer for Ampere's law. So, uh, for, yeah, for Ampere's law. So um, if we pick the blue surface, we already got an answer. And we are trying to use this quantity for this green surface in a way that we are going to get the same answer. Um, so, uh, I guess that is both of the facts. One is that the laws of nature are actually consistent. It's internally consistent. It doesn't somehow change depending on these arbitrary surfaces you pick. And the second thing is, okay, uh, given that they look different, the new term we are going to introduce, it's going to make this arbitrary surface difference no longer matter anymore again. So that whichever surface you pick, you'll still get the same answer again. Okay, so uh, when we come back from break at 2, oh, I spoke too long, uh, 202, then uh, we will go through just the considerations to figure out what this displacement current should be so that this um, particular problem is resolved.